So guys, it's just one of those days when you are looking at your plants and you sow white, cottony, fuzzy balls, which means that there are mealybugs and you have to clean it up. Uh, almost there is no week that I don't have uh, some pests uh, or a problem that don't have to deal with with 300 pots or more um, that's probably what's going to happen to you in the past i think mealybugs used to scare me more when i started collecting five six years ago now they don't and i rarely lose plants permanently due to mealybugs uh, i am a little bit more scared of root mealybugs which i'm going to also cover today in this video and how to deal with them but i have actually been successful treating them too except if it's a really small specimen um, aphids also don't scare me as much um, fungus does scare me <laughs> I have lost plants due to fungus um, trips disgust me not scare but disgust me <laughs> so but today I'm just going to talk about mealybugs and what in the last six years of my experience dealing with succulents has worked really well so these are two things that I go to when I'm dealing with mealybugs. Uh, one is 70% alcohol. Uh, you can buy it anywhere. It can be from um, my or Walmart, any grocery store, wherever you find it. When the pandemic started, it was crazy. I think I went through 13 stores to find one of these. Now, when I find them, I stock up <laughs> for a little while, so I'm covered for months, just in a case. Um, I I use 70% alcohol directly, so there is no diluting, there is no adding water, there is no adding soap, anything. After I spray the plant that has mealybugs, I will remove it from the light, any source of light. If it's outside, it's gonna completely be in a shaded area where it won't get any light. I also, if it's under lights, I will remove it from under lights for 24 hours. Uh, they do say that alcohol evaporates quickly, but I'm going to tell you in the past when I wouldn't wait 24 hours, sometimes 10 hours, I would have damages. I would recommend removing the plant for 24 hours. Um, if you buy a 90% alcohol, then probably you need to dilute it with some water. At the conservatory, they usually mix 90% alcohol with a little bit of water and a little bit of dish soap. It's up to you if you want to do that. Another thing that I do a lot of times is I would spray them heavily with alcohol and then I would uh, wash it off with rainwater and then still keep it away from the light. Uh, about five to seven days after the first spraying, I will repeat the spraying again. Uh, and I usually repeat spraying twice. So over the period of 14 days, I will spray three times and usually the plant is gonna be clean and I will have no problem for a little while. In my collection, plants that have been getting uh, mealybugs the most are Stapelius and Huernias. They have been super weak to getting mealybugs. With Echeverias, they come and go, Graptopetalums actually have been doing always pretty good for me. Uh, cacti also can can get uh, different kind of pests but these guys have been terrible terribly weak to fight mealybugs so I constantly have to treat them uh, probably by far the worst was when they all got root mealybugs um, initially I have made this video in the past I soaked the roots and the whole plant in alcohol and I can tell you alcohol did not work out for root mealybugs they came back so how I defeated mealybugs was using neem oil. Neem oil is great to have. Uh, I have used it now for treating fungus and white mold. Uh, you can use it for different kind of pests. And most of the time plants are benefiting from it and not having a bad reaction. There is some plants uh, the, where leaves will have a reaction and I will talk about that as well. I would recommend you get organic pure neem oil so this is not a mixture this looks like an oil inside guys oops so i just cleaned it up <laughs> because i spilled a few drops um so also watch out that this does not come into contact with your 
eyes and lips and skin and because it can cause irritation um, so buy organic pure oil you can find it on Amazon or some some of the local places may have it uh, big box stores don't sell pure, pure organic oil they will sell you mixtures sprays and I don't think that's gonna work so don't do that uh, get this and uh, this little bottle was quite expensive at the little uh, local store that sells lights and plants and so on it was $16 and I think online you can find it cheaper well I like to support them because they're, they're good people and I buy my cocoa break and other stuff so I didn't mind to pay a few dollars extra but you can go online and find it so this is pretty small package but I have it for a few years now like so it will last for a while uh, and there is instructions here how to mix it so one quart of uh, one quart of spray which I'm going to show you what it is if you have one of those cooking measuring glass dishes that shows liters and quart and and cups and so on so here it is so for one quart of spray, you, you're gonna fill it up with one quart of warm water. Then you're gonna add one and a half teaspoon of this neem oil. I think I last time made it stronger, so it was like two teaspoons. Uh, and um, half a teaspoon of uh, mild dish liquid. I use the Dawn detergent dish detergent and then you shake it and mix it well I didn't shake it obviously I, I mixed it in a dish and um, and then you can put it in a spray bottle I have spray bottles that are 99 cents from Ikea so I use those or you can just pour directly depend what you what you're doing I ended up soaking the plants just give me a minute Kylo really wanted to go outside so um, where was I so yeah when I had root mealy bugs I soaked the whole of the, these huernias and stapelias I freed them from soil and I soaked the roots even the whole plant for about 60 seconds in that neem oil mixture uh, that was pretty radical and it damaged a lot of plants I can tell you that they had like stains all over it did work I did not have root mealy bugs uh, anymore so do, did I have to like s s uh, put whole plant in there? I don't know. Maybe I could have just sprayed a little and just put the roots in. I don't think I would repeat that again. I was just really desperate because I had a really severe infestation uh, among these uh, Stapelius and Huernias. After I was certain that there is no more root mealy bugs, I took them to conservatory to a separate spot where uh, you know they can start recovering and growing because conservatory also has root mealy bugs they still have it in some of the pots and I just try to keep away my pots from it so in this particular case I don't have root mealy bugs here but I do get surface mealy bugs all the time what's the difference between neem oil and alcohol alcohol kills them on contact neem oil uh, sort of disables them so they can't have uh, babies and regenerate and then eventually when they die they they don't really spread uh, so with alcohol you can sometimes have them come back so you have to keep repeating treatment i think i sprayed this few weeks ago and here they are back again and look how how bad this this here is so I'll take care of that right now and I'm going to just show you how my Sibelius and Huernias are doing I think I have only three here at home and then I'm going to give you a, like a quick peek of how they're doing uh, the ones that I left at the conservatory half a year ago or almost a year ago so here's my alcohol here um, I'm going to definitely spray, spray this whole plant it has been having a lot of new growth, but mealybugs keep coming back. Sometimes, if you want to clean it up after spraying, this is how it's going to look. 
mealybugs, when they come in contact with the alcohol, they're going to be brown. I might actually treat this one with neem oil as well. Because it's been giving me trouble for the last month. Like they just kept coming back. And this plant has also bloomed. And, and when they bloom, that's when uh, mealybugs full force came back. They typically concentrate around the blooms and you have to extra spray those areas. And this is the case with Echeverius as well and Crassulas. Mealybugs love blooms. So yeah, I just keep turning it, going around, spraying, and then removing the mealybugs. And then in a week, repeat. So here is my Huernia Schneideriana. I had a lot of this plant and some parts uh, were in a very poor shape and they're in the conservatory, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, some of these healthier ones that I left here, as you can see, they had a, a lot of new growth. They, they got longer and then they started like triple uh, branching in some of the areas. There is some ha that have yellow tips. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why, maybe they, something is missing um, or maybe they got dry a bit. So I might need to remove those. This one also got one, two, three, four, four branches growing. So, and there were blooms that I removed. Uh, there was one there, I think, and over there, small, uh, dark red blooms. Anyway, let me show you the other two that are here. So here in my bedroom, uh, uh, next to Huernia Schneideriana, I keep this little um, Stapelia giganta. It was a small cutting when I separated it from a mother plant and didn't grow a ton this uh, last few months, just got a little bit longer and has two more little branches. Uh, no pests, it seems healthier than the Schneideriana but uh, in conservatory I have a bigger plant that hopefully one day I'm going to be able to return a bigger piece and have its blooms. Uh, it blooms like a big star-shaped yellow flowers. This is a little rock that was polished and shaped like a dog that I keep in there as a decoration. And here outside I have a big Stapelia orbea Margada. Uh, it was actually all in this one pot. I bought it from gas farms and it was like so large and filling so much of that pot that I separated it and I think I'm gonna keep this which looks pretty um, and it had a bloom um, in the past. Uh, this piece I think I'm gonna sell. It's very healthy. I just have too many of it. And uh, yeah, that's it as far as my Stapelia and Quernia collection here at home. So let me show you quickly how the rest that's in conservatory is looking like. So here is my uh, Stapelia Giganta. I have a very small cutting um, at home that's rooted, a small plant. Um, but this one here was in a really bad shape. It had root mealybugs and it was treated and I think I ended up spraying or dunking it in the neem oil mixture and it just got a lot of spots. And I was planning to cut those eventually until I see the new growth. And this is what happened. You see all this healthy new growth? So it just didn't look well. So now I think what I'm gonna do is just cut off these pieces that don't look nice and because there is a lot of new growth. I think this plant will recover. This is some of my sick um, Snyderiana wernia and again this is the one that was treated heavily with alcohol and neem oil mixture. Finally neem oil mixture fixed it and uh, root mealybugs were gone even the top mealybugs were gone, 
but it took a while to start growing and you can see there is a lot of now new growth not a lot of like this one but all these green new shoots they're all new growths this one gonna take a little while to establish here then over there I purchased a lot of these Stupelius and Guarnius they were quite expensive I think this one here is the one that grows like bell the bloom uh, yeah the bloom is like red bell I will try to find the ID that's the one that also got millibugs I treated it and this one didn't look as bad after the treatment because I didn't heavily soak the top um, but it didn't look great but all the new growth is wonderful now look at all these are all new branches here so this one is growing really well I'm hoping it's gonna grow big here and I can take a smaller plant back home and just um, donate this one to conservatory because we don't have this kind and many different kinds that I actually purchased we don't have here so over there oh yeah I when I was in Serbia uh, you know that I have this one in in my apartment there and I brought two cuttings in the suitcase and they rooted well actually this one rooted already this one has a tiny little root so I'm hoping this one will establish here in conservatory and grow bigger because we don't have it here and then I can again take a smaller plant from here um, then the rest of my Aquarian Stupelia collection I planted I think here and in some of the pots they're a little bit dirty because uh, we water from the hose and um, we still don't have stones here so then uh, the dust gets splashes the plants I think this is uh, Zebrina or Primulina then there is I did leave okay so this is Quernia Primulina Toretti Primulina this is Zebrina and this is an um, I forgot the kind this kind that that's another kind that's really dehydrated and this is a um, cutting another cutting that I brought that I put in the ground thinking that that it's gonna root there faster so these don't look as good as the bigger ones in my experience smaller specimens that are sensitive to millibugs um, have a hard time fighting and bigger specimens have a, a easier time you know conquering them and um, let's see Oh yeah, this is another one that I brought here. Uh, I think this is Keniensis maybe. Um, that one was treated for root mealybugs a lot and it recovered and I'm hoping it's gonna fill this space. This is also my uh, Chrysula's string of buttons hybrid. When I was making this arrangement, I ended up putting them here to add color. So guys, hope these tips have been very helpful to you. Do get these. Uh, in my experience, I, I, that's the two things that I go and use. You can. There is other stuff that you can use. There is systemics, which I'm trying not to use. Some of them are really bad for our environment. So this is natural. I try to manage my pests with this. They also work great for aphids. This also works for fungus. Um, so I definitely highly recommend getting these. Uh, thank you always is watching. If you have more questions or suggestions, um, uh, what to make next video about, you are welcome to put in the comments. See you next time.